This is the OneClick web app, an in-browser application for accessing the OneClick console. Let's begin by introducing the navigation pane. There are three tabs here at the top of the navigation pane. There's the Explorer tab, the Locator tab, which allows us to perform searches, and the Users tab, which allows an administrator to create and manage OneClick users. When we first launch OneClick, we see the Explorer tab. There are three columns for displaying alarm counts. As we go through the Explorer tab, there is the Global Collections group and various containers and applications, such as the Configuration Manager, Policy Manager, Service Performance Manager, and VPN Manager. In the Locator tab, we can run searches. There are a lot of out-of-the-box searches to choose from, but we can also create our own custom searches. If we click the Create Search button, we can select a pre-configured attribute or select a specific one. Then we click Launch, and it launches the search. As a quick example, on this very small network, we can launch a search of all devices. If this were a large network, I wouldn't want to do this. Launching extremely broad searches on large networks can compromise Spectrum's performance. If I wanted to search something different, like models, I could do an all-accountable models search. Here are the five accountable models in my network that count against my licenses in Spectrum. In the upper right is the Contents pane. Here is one of our Alarms tabs, which we'll cover in more detail later. Our Topology tab is grayed out. But when we select Universe in the Navigation pane, we now have the option to see our network topology. Here are all the devices in our Universe group, as well as their connectivity and their modeling. For a list view of our devices, we click the List tab. The List tab has a list of all the devices for the group selected in the Navigation pane. We can sort this list using the column headers. If I right-click the headers, it opens the Table Preferences dialog, which allows us to show or hide other columns in the list. This offers a lot of flexibility in controlling the device data that we can and can't see. As we move over, there's the Events tab. If we have the Universe selected, and then we click the Events tab, it shows us events for all devices in that particular container. If we need to see past events, Clicking the Filter button opens the Event Filter dialog. We can show events for a time range, or we can show events from the last 24 hours. We can show events for subcomponents, which are any ports or applications or submodels that fall under this particular device. We click OK, and now we can see events for this device from the last 24 hours. Let's move on to the Information tab. You might notice that the Information tab, Events tab, and Alarms tab are duplicated. There's an Information tab here in the Contents pane, and an Information tab here in the Component Details pane. These are just two different ways to view the same information. Tabs in the Contents pane default to a larger view, and tabs in the Component Detail pane default to a more specific view. The Information tab contains a wide and various amount of information about our device. We can see modeling information, asset information, the device's serial number, firmware version, the information tab is where all of this data is collected. In the bottom of the console, we have the component detail pane. We have the host configuration tab here, which is where we would go to capture device configurations. There's the root cause tab. When a device is down, this tab shows the root cause of its down state. There's the interfaces tab, which shows all the interfaces that belong to this device, both physical and virtual. The Performance tab shows the performance of our selected device. It's important to note that this tab only collects data while we have it selected. If we were collecting performance data for all devices at all times, it would cause performance issues with the Spectra server itself. The Neighbors tab shows us a device's connectivity. If this device had any sort of connectivity, you would see its neighbors on either side, similar to the Topology tab. In the Cleared Alarms History tab, we can see any alarms that were cleared in the past. Similar to the Events tab, we can filter it for a specific time range. The default setting for the Alarms tab is to show alarms from the past 24 hours, and the default for the Events tab is events from the past 4 hours. The reason for this is there are going to be far more events than alarms. In Spectrum, nothing happens without events, alarms included. Events are very important, but also very common, and we don't want to flood the user with every event logged in Spectrum. The Attributes tab contains attributes specific to each device. Attributes correspond to CISO IDs that exist on the device. 
In our List tab in the Component Detail pane, we can see that as of just now, the primary management SNMP for this device is not responding. Spectrum is going to generate an alarm. The condition of this alarm is major. The color of the icon turned orange, and the border of the Component Detail panel also changed. Let's go to the Alarms tab in the Component Detail panel. The new alarm is listed right here. The Root Cause tab is still grayed out because the device is not down. Spectrum has already determined that it's just SNMP that's down, but the device is actually still up. We've fixed the issues causing our management SNMP to go down. Spectrum can now successfully pull the device. We can see the condition has returned to normal, and the alarm is gone. If we click on the Cleared Alarms History tab, we can see the alarm was cleared.